You ever look at a rich person and think, how many people do you think they have had buried in a swamp somewhere? Well, okay, maybe you aren't that curious, but perhaps you look at this group of billionaires that are the NBA owners and wonder, where did they get all their money from? Well, today, you're about to find out. And before day. Okay, don't need any rules for this, but we're gonna go in team alphabetical order because I love you guys. Also, I found this list on Wikipedia and it was way easier to do it this way. Alrighty then, let's go. The Hawks are owned by six people that include Tony Ressler, a billionaire that made his money in the finance industry and owns several private equity firms, aka a loan shark. Stephen Price, who is the executive chair of Town Square Media, which owns a bunch of radio stations. Rich Schnall, who made his money in finance. Sarah Blakely, who invented spanks for women to hide their fat. Former rapper Jesse Itzler, aka Jesse James, who is married to Blakely, who after making the song Shake It Like a White Girl, founded the company Marquis Jet, which he sold to Warren Buffett. Here's some of his hot track. Wow, good thing he went and got a day job. And of course, Grant Hill, who was a rich kid and ended up playing basketball for a living and flopped his way to two national championships in college. It's worth bringing up that every Hawks owner except one is Jewish. Can you guess which one it is? Grausbeck is the leader of a firm that bought the Celtics in 2002. He made his money by being a partner in a venture capital firm. In addition to running the company that owns the Celtics and watching his team gladly trade away bums like Isaiah Thomas, Grausbeck also sits on several boards and probably takes warm baths in all of his money. Russian billionaire Mikhail Prokhorov is one of the first post-Soviet era billionaires to emerge from the ashes of the fallen empire. In 1995, he bought Norilsk Nickel, one of Russia's largest smelting operations for pennies on the dollar in a rigged auction. He was handpicked by the former leaders to become a billionaire and then ousted Jay-Z to now own one of the shittiest franchises in the league, which he is now selling. I bet you have no idea how this man got all of his money. No clue. Also, the Hornets have been awful since he bought them. If Jerry Reinsdorf looks like an accountant, that's because he is. He used to work for the IRS, but then made his fortune in real estate. He bought the White Sox in 1981 and the Bulls in 1984 for only $16 million. Reinsdorf is known for being incredibly cheap and generally anti-player and anti-players union. A lot of Chicago fans blame him for the breakup of the 90s bull. Dan Gilbert is a former real estate agent that founded Rock Financial in 1985, which became Quicken Loans, which Gilbert purchased outright in 2002. He bought the Cavs in 2005 and was gifted LeBron James, with whom he has had a troubled on-again, off-again relationship with, in which Gilbert wrote a brooding, childish letter that claimed his LeBron-less Cavs would win a ring before the Heat did after Braun left him. Talk about your take-backs, eh? Mark Cuban came from a modest background and was the son of an automobile upholsterer. He founded Broadcast.com, which he sold for a fortune in 1999, and that is the primary source of his wealth that allows him to be an investor, petulant owner, and run on treadmills all day and still somehow be fat. Ann Walton Cronkey is the wife of Stan Cronkey, who also owns the Rams. The Walton part is important being that she is an heiress to the Walton fortune as she is the niece of founder Sam Walton. She married Stan in 1974 and he made his money in real estate and now lives the life of being a rich white asshole when he married into the richest family on earth that could build a stadium out of diamonds if they wanted to. What a dick. Gores made his money in the financial industry shocker, founding Platinum Equity in 1995. He bought the Pistons in 2011 and they have been rebuilding every year since then. But I'm sure Blake Griffin and his stellar ability to shoot will solve all of their problems. LaCobb made his money in venture capital. Unlike most of the fans of his team, he isn't a bandwagon as he held season tickets for 10 years prior to buying the team in 2010. LaCobb famously wrote a letter saying his team was light years ahead of the league. I guess blowing 3-1 leads was the trend he was trying to set. 
Tillman Fertitta is a Texas billionaire that owns Landry's Restaurant. You know those mid-level to mediocre eateries you see everywhere, which he started in 1980, and has assets such as the Golden Nugget Casino and owns stakes in the Texans and Astros. He is the third cousin of the Fertittas that sold the UFC and has an investment firm with Richard Handler, Dick for short. Herbert Simon made his fortune in real estate, and if you've heard of Simon Malls, yeah, he's that guy. He bought the Pacers in 1983 and has watched his team choke in the playoffs every year since. After Donald Sterling got deposed like a shame dictator, Steve Ballmer, the former CEO of Microsoft, where he started there in 1980 as the company's 30th employee, bought the team for an assload of money. He also really, really likes developers. Developers, 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 developers. Bus Kids, led by Genie, who is the GM, comically own the Lakers after their daddy gifted it to them in his will. The six buses are the definition of rich kids that haven't really done much with their lives except orbit around the Lakers and their dad's fortune. Jerry Buss, however, was a chemist and a real estate developer, which is funny because chemistry seems to be the most lacking thing with the Lakers from top to bottom. Good luck with Isaiah. The are owned by three guys, Robert Para, a 36-year-old shady businessman who started Ubiquity Networks, a company that profited off of violating sanctions to Iran and makes shitty unsecured routers, Daniel Strauss, who owns a bunch of nursing homes, and Steve Kaplan, an investor. Also, Ubiquity once accidentally paid $46 million to some guy posing as an employee, and the Grizz fired David Fisdale for no reason. They are taking their asses off. Take that for data. Take that for data. Mickey Arison is the son of Ted Arison, who built the Carnival Cruise Empire. Mickey's son, Nick, is the CEO of the Heat. I see nepotism doesn't run in this family at all. Arison is also a college dropout, unlike the man who delivered him two championships. Can't drop out of college if you don't go. Mark Lazary is a billionaire hedge fund manager, along with Wes Edens, another finance guy who was in with the Lehman Brothers early on, and that didn't go bad or anything. These two keep just as low profile as the Bucks themselves. I wonder how long it takes until Giannis pulls a luau cinder. Glenn Taylor made his fortune in the printing industry, which isn't a dying medium or anything. Before he bought the Timberwolves in 1995, Taylor was a Republican senator in the Minnesota Senate. What's more shocking about that to me is there are actually Republicans in Minnesota. If Tom Benson looks like a used car salesman, that's basically what he is, as he owns a lot of dealerships in the Texas and Louisiana area. He also owns the Saints, which he threatened to move multiple times to San Antonio and bought the Pelicans in 2012 after David Stern agreed to rig the draft lottery so he could get Anthony Davis. James Dolan is the petulant son of Charles Dolan who founded Cablevision and is the walking embodiment of a meddling, spoiled rich kid who has no business running an NBA franchise. Essentially the Jim Ursay of the NBA, Dolan pretty much cares more about his band than making the Knicks a winner with his odd boner for Isaiah Thomas Sr. and idiotic move after idiotic move. Thank God he has no clue what hockey is, though the Rangers suck now too. Clay Bennett is one of the co-founders of Chesapeake Energy Corporation, which somehow is shockingly involved in many controversies, including collusion, shady business deals, environmental damage, chemical spills, and a landslide which they cause. But hey, more people were probably pissed when Katie left than all that shit. Do you have a few moments? I want to sit you down and tell you about Amway. You buy products like toilet paper, do you not? Why not buy them from me? Rich DeVos is actually the owner of Amway, and you can thank him for people cornering you at your gym to tell you about Nutricore and whatever bullshit MLM they are trying to sell you. Ah, stupid people, a time-proven, profitable business. The Sixers are owned by too many people to list as they were bought by a group in 2011 led by investor Joshua Harris. Other minority owners include Will and Jada Pinkett Smith and Kevin Hart. I guess Will and Kevin fully understand that sometimes you have to tank in order to be successful.
Robert Sarver is the son of a prominent Arizona businessman who was a banker. Sarver founded his own bank in 1984 and has seen success in the industry since. Sarver is also known as one of the worst owners in the NBA since he bought the Suns in 2004 and they have gone downhill like Lindsey Vaughn's skiing career, literally and figuratively. I used both of those correctly. Paul Allen is the second owner in the NBA to have made his money off of Microsoft as he co-founded the endeavor with Bill Gates after Billy's daddy gave him a bunch of money to start his Whittle software company. He also owns the Seahawks and the Sounders. Vivek Ranadeev is an Indian business owner who made millions in the software industry. An Indian man involved in IT? You don't see that every day. He bought a majority stake in the team in 2013 after the Maloofs tried to screw the city of Sacramento like YouTube did to smaller channels. Peter Holt made his money selling heavy equipment as he owns the largest Caterpillar dealership in America, which his daddy started in 1933. Holt did serve in the army where, as an infantryman in Vietnam, earned a silver star, three bronze stars, and a purple heart. Okay, this dude is pretty badass. Respect. Larry Tannenbaum is a Canadian businessman who is the son of a former steel magnate and grew a successful construction and engineering firm that basically built all of Toronto and other projects throughout the world. He also owns the Maple Leafs, another team that hasn't built him a winner yet. See what I did there? Gail Miller is the widow of Larry Miller, who owned a bunch of car dealerships and movie theaters. I know you're going to ask if the Millers are Mormons from Utah, and yes, they are Mormons from Utah. Our last on this list is Washington Wizards owner Ted Leonsis, who came from a modest background to find fortune in America online and got out of that thing at just the right freaking time. Leonsis is known as a hands-on type of owner, and I can't think of any situation where that doesn't ever go bad. You can't argue about his passion for his team, though, as he once scuffled with a fan who criticized him. Luckily for him, Dan Snyder is a much bigger buffoon. Ah, the Wiz and the Cavs. I wouldn't let my kids near them. They might choke. Well, there you have it, a ragtag bunch of Jewish businessmen, people who are blessed with rich parents, a few self-made men, and the Fresh Prince. Stay tuned as I probably will do this for each major sport, and don't forget to download the FanDuel app from the link below and use my code SCORE5 to get in on that fantasy NBA action. I'm 5 Points Vids, and you made it to the end of this video.